Well, it's Thursday. It must mean Greg's List. And tonight on Greg's List, Greg Whalen does a double take in the world of three-dimensional printing. It may sound like science fiction, printing machines that can replicate whole objects, but Greg tells us it's very real. Well, now, let's say that you're a mechanic on a job and you realize you forgot your wrench. So you go down the street and you have them print you a copy. And you probably think, uh, print you a copy. Useless, right? No, I'm talking about going down and having them print you another wrench. Impossible? No, no, not at all. That's the sort of stuff that's happening at a company just outside Boston. Burlington Mass, where Z Corporation is doing tricks A to Z in 3D with 3D printers and magic powder. Really? Any shape, anything that you can dream and get into the computer, get in to describe it in three dimensions. Joe Titlow, vice president of product management, showed me a table full of printed objects, multicolored toys, trinkets, tools, and even a model of a Russian cathedral, all scanned and printed in one piece in three dimensions from three-dimensional models, no matter how intricate, no matter how many moving parts. It's a technology that can fabricate a physical object from a digital plan that starts in the computer. A team at MIT developed the technology and founded Z Corp 13 years ago to commercialize it. When an irresistible force such as you meets an old immovable object like me. They scan objects with a laser, feed details into a computer down to four thousandths of an inch, then replicate the object on a 3D printer using specially formulated powder. Z Corp likes to demonstrate the process with a wrench, letting you see how the printer passes repeatedly over the powder bed. They like to color the little wrench wheel red just to show it can be done. A binder solution and the powder interact and solidify, infused with extra resin in this case, so the copy will be as strong as the original tool. The process takes several hours, but... You can bet I shall go I got to lift the finished product out of the powder. Feels like you have your hands in flour. Then I got to blow it clean and examine it in awe. And so look out, cause who knows what the fates have been stored. This will be great for astronauts who don't want to carry a toolbox into space. It's already great for a design engineer with a big idea. The same day that he has the idea, he can now make it happen in the computer and print it out and hold it in his hand. And he can find out right away, hey, uh, that was a dumb idea. Or a good idea. Bet some Prince Charming designed this pink pump for his Cinderella. The 3D printers cost $15,000 now, but they cost about hundred grand 10 years ago, and in a decade, maybe an affordable household appliance. It's just starting to hit what we call the kind of mass consumer market. They can even replicate a skull. How about a whole person? <laughs> you know, we laugh, but there's a university research going on right now to print three-dimensional print of human organs. How about a brain for old Yorick here? Or a heart? Hey, wait a minute. Joe, are you for real? <laughs> I was actually made, yeah, just yesterday. <laughs> Maybe they could make me today. But will you tell these fools I'm not crazy? That was a dumb idea. You're telling me, but 3D printing? What a great idea. Don't say no, because he insists. Now, I was a little disappointed they couldn't uh, replicate my sunglasses. I guess they can't make, uh, you know, translucent things yet, but who needs sunglasses when you can have a wrench? And that's what's topping my list this week. Greg, that was <laughs> wonderful. And I have another copy of the wrench yeah. right here. And you